Um, Harry, this is getting to be a bit of a habit, you getting called up for the England squad. Are you getting used to it, or is it still very special and something of a surprise every time you get that call? No, definitely every time I do get that call, it's, it's a special moment. Um, a moment that I'm really proud of. That Thursday when the squad gets announced, I'm sat by my phone waiting for the text, and um, no, it's a special feeling when it comes through. Um, like you've said, I've been here the last few camps, so I'm getting used to the surroundings, the staff, the players. But no, it's a special moment every time Every time I get the, the call up. Does it put any more pressure on your club form, the fact that you now know that the England manager and his team are probably watching every game you play, either on tape or live? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say the, the bigger games you're playing, the more pressure there is in football. Um, but all footballers, we play under pressure a lot of the time in training, in games, especially in big games, like I've said. Um, so no, I know I know I need to perform for my club. That's the main thing. Play week in, week out, and keep performing. And hopefully, like like he has this camp, he, he trusts me and, and brings me into the squad. With your confidence as high as it is, are you in the best form of your career right now? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, obviously, last year broke into to the whole side, um, playing the Premier League, and I, I felt like I, I I held my own last year. But this year, I really feel like I've stepped on. And um, thanks to to all the staff at Leicester and obviously Gareth in bringing me in great faith in me and bringing me to the England setup and obviously learning off better players and, and great players around me. I think it's improved my game all around. I mean, you mentioned Southgate there. He has had high praise for you and John Stones and Joe Gomez in, in the back three that played in the, in the last Autumn Internationals in particular. Um, it looks like you guys are full square and front and circle, the favourites maybe in those positions, especially when he's not picked the likes of Gary Cahill and Chris Smalling. Do you feel that? No, I feel like every time he does give me the call up and you see there's good players who, who don't make the squad, especially in our position at the moment. Um, there's, a, there's a number of players who we, who we could select from. You've seen with him bringing Tarkowski and Mawson into the, into the squad. And um, no, it's a, it's a position that's up for grabs, um, as every position is. And um, at the moment, only what I'm trying to do is, like I said, play week in, week out for my club, impress. And when I come to, when I come to England, try and play and try and perform. It must feel like an extra compliment, though, when you look at some of the names that he's left out. I mean, Gary Cahill's the most obvious, but Chris Smalling, Michael Keane, players that have played a lot for England. So I've been captain Gary Cahill as well on a number of occasions. You've been chosen ahead of them. Yeah, definitely. Like I've said, they're, they're good players. They've, they've played a, a lot of games for England, and there's, there's a reason why they've done that. They've, they've had good experience at the level. But no, like you've said, it, it does give me confidence. It gives me great belief that Gareth wants me. He trusts me, and he trusts the other players as well who we're playing with. And... Um, no, fingers crossed, it, it carries on. How much of the, 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 the renewed success at Leicester is that having on your confidence when you come to a, a, an England camp like this? And I wonder how you see that battle for seventh spot at the minute. Yeah, it's, um, it's an intriguing battle. Um, Burnley have been great all year and then there's Everton coming strong as well. And there's the numerous teams who's after that seventh spot. Um, but like you've said, if your team's doing well, your club team's doing well, it's, it's easier to play in a winning team. And... Um, when you are winning games, it is it is easy. You do get confidence from it, and um, starting to keep more clean sheets, obviously, which is which is good for a defender. And coming into camp, it does give you bigger confidence and able to do better things. He doesn't pick easy friendlies, does he, Gareth Southgate? You've Brazil and Germany in the last round, and now you've got Holland and Italy in this in this schedule. What's that like from a player's perspective? No, it, it's it's definitely better. We feel like we want to test ourselves against the best. Um, You've seen the last five, five or six friendlies now. They've all been against top opposition and none more so than the, the two games coming up. We know it's going to be tough, um, tough games against good teams. But no, we're, we're relishing the challenge and we're looking forward to it. One final question from me about the diplomatic situation with Russia. And I know this is a difficult one, but how do you feel about that? Does it make you unnerved in any way? Would you have any concerns about your family going to watch you at the World Cup? Example? No, I wouldn't have any concerns at all. I think at the moment it's, it's out of our control. Um, the main priority, obviously, is our safety and security, but um, we'll leave that into people who's, who's higher than us to, to decide whether and what's happening. But I'm sure if we do go to the World Cup, which I'm sure we will do, it will um, it'll all be safe and secure and everyone will be raring to go. Hi, Harry. Um, just get your thoughts first and foremost of Harry Kane's not here, obviously, with, with injury. Sort of how sort of significant is that in terms of going to these two games without such a great strike? No, obviously, it's, it's a massive loss. Um, the form that he's been in, he's been terrific over the last couple of seasons now. And every time he's played for England, he seems to he seems to score. So he's a big player for us, no doubt. Um, but we've got some good players um, coming in and replacing him, and we've got strength and depth in that forward areas that we can hopefully score some goals over the next couple of games. And then obviously Harry can get a good quick recovery, and um, we can look forward to having him at the World Cup. Of course, 
one of the players you know very well in, in, in Jamie Vardy. I mean, sort of how sort of do you assess how well he's playing at the moment in this, this season? No, definitely. I think, especially in recent weeks, I'm not sure about his goal scoring record, but I think he scored, I think he's seven in seven, in seven or something around that. Um, you know, he's been phenomenal in the recent weeks and he seems to be popping up with big goals at crucial times. So, um, you know, he'll be coming here in full of confidence and um, I'm sure he'll be looking forward to playing and hopefully scoring goals. Is this a real opportunity? Because, of course, we've we all have seen Harry will lead the line, but Jamie's proved himself as, in his, as a quality striker himself. Yeah, definitely. You've seen over the past couple of years um, in big games, especially against big teams. Uh, Jamie Vardy normally scores. Um, he's done it this year for Leicester and um, he's scored a few goals for England as well when he's come on in crucial games. So, no, we know what he can do. Um, he'll be looking forward to it. And um, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing him scoring a couple of goals over the next couple of games. We were just talking, um, Harry, sorry, we were just talking to um, Nick Pope before about kind of, you know, his beginnings and, and obviously you, you came through as sort of a, uh, a professional club and all that that through your career. But do you think sort of working through the sort of lower divisions you know, keeps you grounded and gives you a different but you know, equally helpful yeah, definitely. Obviously, there's a lot of people, the way that people come through, it's all different for everybody. Um, obviously, myself, Nick Pope and people like Jamie Vardy, we've all come through different, uh, similar in terms of playing in the in the lower leagues. Um, one thing for certain is that when you do generally play in the lower leagues, you generally do get experience of playing games week in, week out, which is, which is really big, especially as a young boy. You see a lot of players in the Premier League who are very talented young boys and then they, they, they don't really play or break into first team until 21, 22 years old. So, no, I think playing in the lower leagues, it's a big help in terms of playing week in, week out. I think by the age of 20, um, 20 years old, I think I played around 160 games, which is quite a lot for, for a boy that age. And um, you see some players in the Premier League who might have not got the chance by then. So, no, I do think getting experience and learning your game by playing... Because the best way you can learn uh, in any game is by playing matches, and um, you know, I think it helps in that behalf. Yeah. Does, does it in, in some way make you a bit hungrier? Because you know, you, that's a wait for your opportunity. And now I don't know you line up against a lot of no disrespect to them, but you know they're, they're sort of probably coming through Premier League academies. Does it make you that much hungrier? Um, I think it's hard to say because I haven't done it the other way, but. Myself, I've always been really hungry to play at the top level. Even when I was playing in League One, I always felt my aim and ambition was to play at the top. Um, and I'm sure it's the same for everyone else. That's what everyone dreams of, playing in the Premier League. Um, and obviously playing for your country is the pinnacle of everything. So, no, it, it's happened to me and um, hopefully I can continue that. I think obviously everyone's different in, in, in whatever academies are in the Premier League. I think you obviously got to look at the situation and what the situation is between the, the club and the player. Um, the, the biggest thing is playing games for any footballer. If you're not playing games, you can't improve really. Um, you can't develop your experience as a player. Um, so I would I would recommend playing games. Obviously, there's the under-23 league, which is I've watched it a few times with Leicester. It is a competitive league now. Um, but there's nothing like uh, on a Saturday at three o'clock putting your boots on and going out and playing a playing a league game, playing for three points, uh, where it means a lot. The pressure's on, um, so I would I would recommend that. But obviously, there's different ways in, in people can come through. You see people break through when they're 22, 23 year old, and then they go through and um, they um, they have successful top careers. So I think there's both ways it can be done. Um, just for myself, I I was fortunate enough to play a lot of games when I was a young boy. And, I made that step through the divisions. You seem so comfortable on the ball. Was, uh, progressing when you were a youngster, was there a player that you used to watch and admire who you maybe modelled yourself a little bit? No, when I was growing up, I've always said I always look for, looked um, up to John Terry and Rio Ferdinand, who I feel like they, at my time, they was the best centre-half partnership um, I've watched really in my era. Um, both very good on the ball, both very comfortable. Um, so, no, I did look up to them, but probably the main reason is why I do like feel myself comfortable on the ball is when I was a young boy, I did play centre midfield um, until I was 16 years old. And then I, um, I'm a little growth spurt and um, 
ended up playing centre half for a few games and, and managed to break through at centre half. So I'd say that's the main reason. But no, I, I did look up to uh, John Terry and Rio Fern. I knew, who, like you've seen in, in the past years, they, they're very comfortable on the ball and, and able to bring the ball out from the back. Yeah, obviously, um, me and Vards, we got on really well. Um, both Sheffield lads, and we have a bit of banter all the time with each other. But no, in training, like I've said, it is a nightmare to play against. Um, you've always got to be aware of him. And I, and I know for when I played against him at Hull, um, especially at the King Power game, uh, when he was at Leicester away, he caused us all sorts of problems that day. And um, we worked on it tirelessly in training uh, to the preview of the game. And... Um, we couldn't really stop and I think they beat us 3-1 on the day and they, they deserved to win the game when I was at Hull. So, no, I know what it's like to play against him and I'm sure you could speak to a lot of defenders out there in the Premier League. Um, they wouldn't like to play against him week in, week out. Do you think with so much focus on Harry Kane, it's actually Yeah, he... Yeah, Jamie, obviously he's quick, but he's, he's an excellent finisher as well. But disrespectful, I wouldn't say in, in them terms because at the moment, Harry Kane's probably the best striker in the world. So he's, he's scoring frequently. He's getting the golden boot uh, in the Premier League the last couple of seasons. He's up there again. Obviously, he's been unfortunate with his injury this time, so he might come up a bit short. But um, no, he's, he's on excellent form, Harry Kane. And... Um, there's nothing more than we can say about him. Hopefully, he can obviously, like I said, I hope him, I wish him a, a quick recovery and hopefully he comes back firing goals um, from now to the end of the season and takes the form into the World Cup.